Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we are going to continue learning about acid and base definitions, and today we're going to do part two. So in part one we learned that the traditional definition of acids and bases is the Arrhenius definition, and by that definition an acid is any substance whose aqueous solution releases hydrogen ions, and a base is any substance whose aqueous solution releases hydroxide ions. So today we're going to do definition two, which is the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. And by definition, a Bronsted-Lowry acid is any substance that can donate an H plus ion to another substance. So it's a hydrogen ion or proton donor. And a Bronsted-Lowry base is any substance that can accept a hydrogen ion from another substance, or is a proton acceptor. So we should take a brief detour here and discuss what we mean when we say, for instance, a polyprotic acid. So if you remember the definition uh, that we just spoke of where an acid is a proton donor, then a polyprotic acid is one that can donate more than one proton, proton being a hydrogen ion. So a polyprotic acid is an acid that contains more than one acidic hydrogen. Examples would be phosphoric acid, which has three um, acidic hydrogens, carbonic, which has two, and sulfuric, which has two. So polyprotic acids do not lose all of the acidic hydrogen atoms in the same, to the same extent. They don't all come off at once. So they come off one at a time. So example, sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid, has complete ionization. Uh, so when you mix sulfuric acid in water, you're going to get first uh, the first proton coming off, so you get the hydronium ion with the hydrogen sulfate ion, and then uh, it will act as an acid, but a weaker acid, and the second one will then come off. So then you have your hydrogen sulfate ion mixed with water, and again producing another hydronium ion and the sulfate ion. So this leads us to a discussion of something called conjugate acid base pairs. So these are all reversible. So if you had here a um, an acid example here, HA, so H plus uh, is going to be the hydrogen ion donor here, the acid. And then here, if you have your base, which would be your hydrogen ion acceptor or your proton acceptor, then the species that forms as the result of losing that hydrogen ion or proton is going to be the conjugate base. So you have these acid-base pairs, and then here the base is the proton acceptor, and here on the uh, reverse side it would be the proton donor. So we're thinking of these as reversible processes, and we talk about these acid-base pairs. So a conjugate acid is the product that forms as a result of gaining a proton, and a conjugate base is the product that forms as a result of losing a proton. So here is an example of hydrogen chloride gas being bubbled through water, and you're forming the hydronium ion and the chloride ion. So the proton donor here is the HCl, that's the acid, and its conjugate acid would be the H3O+. And then we have the base, H2O, acting as the proton acceptor, and then the conjugate base. So right here, HCl is an acid, and its conjugate base is the chloride ion, and water is acting as a base, and its conjugate acid is the H3O+. So conjugate acid-base pairs always differ by one H plus ion. So a conjugate acid has one more H plus, and it has one more H atom in its formula, and 
When you do that, you're increasing the charge by 1 because the hydrogen ion has a charge of plus 1. The conjugate base always has one less H plus or one less proton. And again, it will have one less H in its formula and the charge decreases by 1. So we also need to talk about amphoteric substances. A lot of definitions here. So an amphoteric substance is a substance that can act as either an acid or a base, depending on what is surrounding it. And a notable example is water. Water is our most common amphoteric substance. It can behave as both an acid and a base, which means it can act as a proton donor and a proton acceptor, according to this uh, Bronsted-Lowry definition. So again, water can act as an acid. It can donate a hydrogen ion, forming the hydroxide ion. And it can act as a base and accept um, a hydrogen ion, forming the hydronium ion. So here, we're seeing ammonia being added to water. And then we're seeing the hydroxide ion formed and the ammonium ion. Remember the ammonium ion from our memorizing polyatomic ion days. So what's going on here? So in this case, water is acting as a proton donor, and it's going to donate that proton to the ammonium ion. So ammonia goes from uh, NH3 to NH4+, and water goes from H2O to OH-. So here, ammonia is acting as a base, and as the result of ammonia being bubbled into water, what's happening is the water is losing the hydrogen and it's donating it to the ammonia and that releases the hydroxide ion. So again, here is a pair, the ammonia and the ammonium ion base and its conjugate acid. And here is water acting as an acid and the hydroxide ion is its conjugate base. So here, a general formula would be some acid, HA, interacting with water. And what's happening is the water is, in this case, acting as a base. It's accepting that proton. So water goes from H2O to H3O+. plus. It's forming the hydronium ion. And again, what's left is the anion A-. minus. So again, here, the acid and its conjugate base. The acid has one more hydrogen than its conjugate base. And here we have water acting as a base, accepting the proton, and its conjugate acid has one more proton. So when we talk about amphoteric substances, here are some examples. The bicarbonate ion, HCO3 minus. It's found in sodium bicarbonate, and it's used to neutralize both acids and bases. When mixed with a basic solution, it acts as an acid. So again, when mixed with base, what's going to happen is we're going to get it uh, behaving as a proton donor. And water is formed, and what's left is the carbonate ion. So it's acting as an acid, and that would be its conjugate base. And when mixed with an acidic solution, it acts as a base. So here, HCO3- is going to act as, in this case, because it's reacting with an acid, it's going to accept that uh, proton and act as a base. And that would form H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. And what would be left here would be water. And remember that carbonic acid immediately um, decomposes to water and carbon dioxide, and so it bubbles. So again, acting as a base here. So now we're going to talk about strong acid-base neutralization, remembering that strong acids completely dissociate, forming H3O+, and strong bases completely dissociate, releasing OH-. So if you have a strong acid and a strong base, what's going to happen is you're going to form a salt, sodium chloride, and water. 
and if there are equivalent amounts of the acid and base, then it is completely neutralized. So a neutralization reaction is a reaction where the hydronium ions and the hydroxide ions are equal and they form water molecules, resulting in a neutral solution. And again, the salt is the ionic compound that is composed of the cation from the base and the anion from the acid. Acid plus base yield salt plus water. So that brings us now to our third definition for acids and bases. And this definition we don't use very much, uh, but it's the broadest definition, meaning that it encompasses the most species that have acidic or basic properties. And the definition of a Lewis acid is any atom, ion, or molecule that can accept an electron pair to form a covalent bond. So a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor. And again, it includes acids as acids, substances that do not contain hydrogen at all. So here, boron trifluoride, for instance, can react with a fluoride ion to form uh, boron tetrafluoride. And again, there's no hydrogen here anywhere, but it's acting as an acid. And a Lewis base is an atom, ion, or molecule that can act as an electron pair donor. So here is a summary, and we're not going to really do anything else with the Lewis definition. So we have three definitions of acids and bases. The traditional definition, which is the so-called Arrhenius definition, an acid is a substance that releases hydrogen ion in aqueous solution, and a base is a substance that releases hydroxide ion in solution. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is anything that can act as a proton donor. And the Bronsted-Lowry definition of a base is anything that can act as a proton acceptor. And a Lewis acid is anything that is an electron pair acceptor. And a Lewis base is anything that can be an electron pair donor. So that is it for my part two of acids and bases definitions. This is Mrs. Augustine signing off.